Clean Break Audiobook Chapter 2 It's all right, Em. It's all right, Dad said, holding me. We both knew it could never be all right again. I retched and sobbed, unable to reply. Gran came bursting into the kitchen, disturbed from her nap. What's going on? Oh, for God's sake, you've been sick all over my best china. Who's been sick? said Mom, coming in too. Vita Maxi followed her. Em's been sick, said Gran. I told you not to make a pig of yourself, Emily. Yuck, said Vita. It smells, said Maxi. You two out of here, said Mom. Go into the living room with your Gran. I'll clean it all up. Maybe you'll listen to me next time when I tell you that child needs to stop stuffing herself. God, what a mess. It's even splashed on the curtains. Gran was nearly in tears herself. I'll wash everything. Just leave us alone, please, said Dad. He said it quietly, but Gran stopped fussing and dragged Vita and Maxie out of the kitchen. Oh, Em, said Mom, dabbing at me with a tea towel. We'd better get these things off and stick you straight in the bath. Couldn't you have run to the toilet if you knew you were going to be sick? It wasn't her fault, said Dad. He was so grey-white, he looked as though he might be sick himself. What do you mean? What's going on? said Mom, trying to hitch my sweater over my head. Don't tell her, Dad, I said through layers of soggy wool. If you kept quiet, then maybe it wouldn't be real. I was planning on telling you anyway, but I was leaving it till after Christmas. I'm so sorry. I just hang myself for doing this to you. I didn't mean it to happen. What the hell are you talking about? said Mum, letting go of me. Dad took a deep breath. I've met someone else, Julie. Mum scarcely blinked. Yes, well, that's hardly new, she said. But this time, well, I love her. I'm sorry, I don't want to hurt you, but this is it. The real thing. It's never been this way before. You don't want to hurt me, yet you're telling me you love someone else, said Mum, her face crumbling. Oh, Mum, don't cry, I begged. I wanted to put my arms around her, but it was so wet and disgusting I couldn't touch her. Go and get in the bath, Em, Dad said. Your mum and I need to talk. I need to talk too, I said. You love us, Dad. Mum and me and Vita and Maxie. Of course I love you, darling. I shall come and visit you lots, but I can't help it. I have to go. You can't do this to me. You can't. You can't. Mum started sobbing, swaying on her silver sandals. Dad tried to put his arm around her, but she started hitting him. Don't, Mum. Don't, Dad. I shouted. I couldn't believe this was happening. I kept shutting my eyes and opening them, hoping I was dreaming. If only I could open my eyes determinedly enough, I'd get back to our magical Christmas day. Gran came back into the kitchen and started shouting too. Then she was propelling me upstairs, dragging me to the bathroom, stripping the rest of my clothes off and dunking me in the bath like a baby. She soaked me so hard it felt like she was slapping me. Vita and Maxie kept tapping on the bathroom door, crying to be let in. Oh, for God's sake, said Gran, shampooing my hair because some of it had dangled in the sticks. Her nails dug right into my scalp. I didn't dare tell her she was hurting me. She seemed so terrifyingly cross with me, as if it was all my fault. Maybe it was my fault. Vita and Maxie seemed to be ready to blame me. They came hurtling into the bathroom. Mum's mad at Dad because you made everyone, because you were sick everywhere, Em, said Vita. She's shouting and shouting. She even shouted at me, even though I wasn't sick, wept Maxie. They didn't seem to understand what was really going on. They were too little. I wanted to be little too. Gran was bathing me like a baby. I wanted to be a baby. I wanted her to wrap me up in a towel and pick me up and hug me close. She must have made a proper fuss of me when I was a baby. All Grans did. There, Em, get out the bath. Don't just stand there looking gauntless, Gran snapped. Get yourself dry and put some clean cords on. She yanked me so that I nearly overbalanced. My emerald green, my emerald gleamed as I waved my arms in the air. Oh God, grab my ring! I've got it all wet and soapy. Oh no, what if I've spoiled it? I gasped. Yeah, well, it was a ridiculous thing giving a child your age an emerald ring. Typical bad word for Drunky. It was such a bad word. We all stared at her. How dare she call my dad horrible names? I looked at her pale, veiny legs showing through her dressing gown. It was ridiculous giving an old lady your age a pair of jeans, I said. Vita and Maxie gasped. I backed away from her rapidly because she looked like she was going to slap me. But she just sighed and shook her head at me as if she was simply too caught up scratching, as simply as if she caught me scratching or picking my nose. I realised she was too concerned with what was happening down in the kitchen to care about me cheeking her. Mum was still screaming and sobbing, on and on and on. When I was dry and dressed and in clean clothes, Gran made Vita and Maxie and me stay shut up in the living room. She put the television on and the volume up loud until it buzzed whenever anyone talked we could still hear mum in the kitchen i kept switching channels until gran snatched the remote off me 
Let's watch a video. Let's watch Thomas. Please, please, Thomas. Maxie begged. He hadn't watched Thomas the Tank Engine for months and months. He knew it all by heart. We all knew it by heart, and we, but we still tried watching it, even Gran. Mum was still shouting. Dad was shouting back now. Lisa put her thumb in her mouth and rubbed on rubbed her nose on Dancy's fur. Maxie kept his eyes on Thomas, but under his breath he muttered, Bad money, bad daddy. I wished I had a remote for Mum and Dad so I could press their mute button. I kept telling myself that somehow it would all be all right. They'd stop shouting and suddenly sigh and fall into each other's arms. They'd done this enough times in the past so they could do it again. Dad would say he'd been mad to ever think of leaving us. He'd swear he'd never see the Sarah again. He'd stay with Mum and Vita and Maxie and me and we'd all live happily ever after. I told myself this fairy story over and over, clenching my fists, my diamond out, my emerald ring digging into my skin. For pity's sake, look at you kids. It's Christmas, said Gran. She wrapped her dressing gown right round her and marched up into the kitchen, her bedroom slippers thwacking on the floor at each step. She's gone to tell them off, said Maxie. It seemed to work. The shouting stopped. There was a lot of muttering. Then Gran came back into the living room. Dad came with her. her his eyes were red as if he'd been crying too, but he was smiling determinedly. He looked at his upturned lips looked like his upturned lips had been stuck right on his face by mistake. Right, my little lovelies, what shall we do then? We could play snap, suggested Maxie. He was totally useless at snap, so slow at recognising two identical cards that he simply screamed snap at the top of his voice all the time. Your ears ached when you played snap with Maxie. Snap's stupid and Maxie can't play it properly, said Vita. Let's play happy families. Dad winced. Vita was deliberately guessing guessing at him wasn't deliberate guessing at him she liked happy families because she liked pictures of the rabbit and the squirrels and the mouse family let's play a christmas game said dad he looked around for dancer and put his hand up inside her we'll all dance said dancer let's play musical bumps dad shuffled through the cds until he found an old children's favorites with silly songs about pink toothbrushes and mice clogs and runaway trains not the red nosed reindeer song dancer said jiggling about on the end of dad's arm okay let's get jumping watch me pirouette girls and boys dad played the music really loud maxie and vita started leaping around the living room i started jumping too gran sighed for heaven's sake em do you have to thump about like that you're rattling all my fine china figurines in the cabinet i stopped so abruptly i twisted my ankles no no come on princess emerald you're light as a fairy let me sweep you up in my arms and we'll do a christmas jig yes Merry Christmas to you, you dirty heartbreaking swine, said Gran as she ran out of the room. Vita and Maxie stood still too. No, no, the music's not stopped yet. Don't you children know how to play musical bumps, said Dancer. So we all jumped and bumped regardless of Gran's china. Then Dancer taught us how to play all these old-fashioned games like Squeak Biggie Squeak and Blind Man's Buff. Dad used my woolen scarf as a blindfold. Dancer admired the scarf and said she wished she'd had something similar for those cold nights pulling Santa's sleigh. A chic knitted scarf with matching antler warmers and a woolly patchwork pants would be a great idea too, she said. We all collapsed in a heap on the floor and Dad gave Vita and Maxie a cuddle. I wondered if I was too big for a little kid's cuddle, but Dad reached out and pulled me in. Dad, you're not really going to leave us, are you? I whispered right in his ear. Shh, Princess Emerald, we don't want to discuss state secrets in front of Princess Vita and Prince Maxie, Dad said, putting a finger to my lips. I didn't say any more. I held it in all three tea. Gran laid out turkey sandwiches and mince pies and chocolate log. Now for pity's sake, Em, go easy. Maybe you'd be better off with plain bread and butter, said to Gran. I was feeling so empty I was ready to wolf everything down. The food tasted strange though, too light, like cotton wool. My head felt stuffed with cotton wool too. I couldn't think properly. It was like a dream. Here I was, licking chocolate off my fingers, having my Christmas tea. And Vita and Maxie were pretending to be a dancer and being all giggly and silly, but Mum was upstairs in her room not having any tea at all. Gran tried to take her a tray, but she brought it down and touched. I want Mum, Maxie said, suddenly sliding off his chair. No, leave her alone, Maxie. She's got a bad headache, said Gran. She gave me a headache with all that shouting, said Vita. Vita. Then she paused. She is okay, though, now, isn't she, Dad? I think she still feels a bit poorly, Princess, Dad said. No wonder, Gran spat out, you lying pig. Now, now, come on. You were the one who told me to think of the kids. We don't want to spoil their Christmas. She tried very hard, dancing and singing and playing jokes. 
When Peter got overexcited and Maxie got tearful, he squashed all up, all up on the sofa and made Dan to tell them a long story about a little reindeer in Lapland. Santa came on a talent-spotting visit when the reindeer school had its sports day. Dancer ran wild and won her race, even though she was the youngest reindeer and her antlers were still as small and furry as a pussy willow. I wanted to stay snuggled up and listen too, but I crept out of the room, past Gran angrily washing the tea things in the kitchen, up the stairs to Mom. I listened outside her room, scared of going in, feeling weird and embarrassed. Then I heard little sobs, just like Maxie's, and I went rushing into her. She still had all her clothes on. She was right under the duvet, hunched up in a soggy ball. Oh, Mum, don't cry so, I said. I burrowed under the covers and put my arms right round her, as if she was my little girl and I was her mother. What am I going to do, Em? She sobbed. I can't live without him. It's okay, Mum. It's okay, I said over and over, trying to soothe her. She wriggled away from me, suddenly furious. It's not bad word, okay? You silly little girl. He's leaving us for another woman, for God's sake. Mum hissed. No, he's not. He's fine now, Mum. He's been really lovely to Vita, Maxie and me. You're trying to make it all up to us. He won't go, not really. He loves us. Did he say he wasn't going? I swallowed. Yes, I said, because I wanted so much for it to be true. Mum held on to me. You're sure? Well... Mum knew I wasn't sure, but she badly wanted it to be true too. She let me convince her. I'll find it hard to forgive him though. This isn't the first time, Em. There are things you don't know about him. I don't know why I'm so desperate to hold on to him. I'd maybe be so much better without him, without this uncertainty and heartbreak. But you love him, Mum. Of course I love him, Em. Mum sat up and gave me a proper hug. And then she switched on her crystal drop lamp and looked at herself in the mirror. God, what a sight I look. Mum was very pretty, but she did look a sight, even with her soft, pink, sparkly light of the lamp. Her hair was sticking up in clumps, and her eyelids were sore and swollen like purple grapes. Her dark lipstick was smeared all round her mouth like Vita when she'd been drinking her Ribena. No wonder he's got sick of me, Mum moaned. You go and wash your face and put some makeup on, then you'll knock him dead, I said. Okay, miss, I'll do as I'm told, said Mum. She got herself sorted and slipped her feet back into her new sandals. My million dollar mum, I said. Oh, Em, you're the sweetest, weirdest kid. Her face started crumpling. Don't cry again. You'll mess up all your makeup. Okay, okay, I'm not crying, said mum, blinking like crazy. We walked downstairs hand in hand. Gran came into the hall, holding a tea towel. God, you're going to beg him to stay, aren't you? She said. You'll never learn, Julie. After all the way he's treated you, he needs strangling. She twisted the tea towel violently as if she wished it was Dad's neck. Mum took no notice. She took a deep breath. She held it in for a long moment, her chest high, her lips clumped together. Then she breathed out and walked into the living room. Dad looked anxious as she swayed towards him in her silver sandals. Vita sat up straight, dogs were hanging limply from her arm. <clears throat> Ma Maxie jammed his thumb in his mouth and hunched himself up very small as if he was trying to make himself invisible. Hello, darlings. Mum said brightly and bravely. She stretched up and yawned, acting like she'd just woken up. Hmm, I had a lovely nap. Shall we see what's on telly now? She wasn't really kidding anyone, not even Maxie, but we all acted like we hadn't heard any of the shouting and sobbing. Dad gently pushed Vita along the sofa and patted the cushion. Come and sit down, babe, he said gently. Mum sat beside him. Vita, Maxie and I arranged ourselves around them. Gran sat sniffing and sighing in her chair opposite. We watched all the Christmas specials on television, and whenever there was a funny bit, we all laughed a little too hilariously. Maxie snorted so much he gave himself hiccups. You're getting all tired, young man. Time you were in bed, said Gran. No, 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 squealed Maxie. Yes, 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 said Dad. Hey, Maxie, Dancer wants to tell you about her reindeer house back in Lapland. You never guess what sort of bed she has. Maxie let Dad carry him upstairs. Vita started clambering, so Dad carried her on his other arm. I watched, wishing I could whittle myself down to pocket size so I could cling to Dad like a little monkey too. I clumped along beside them. Dad invented an entire Lapland saga, telling us all about the baby reindeers with their green mossy cots with swan down quilts, and then describing reindeer school where they had their lessons in dancing, trotting, galloping, and special flying instruction for advanced and extra talented reindeer. Maxie fell asleep first. Dad tucked him under his own blankets and ruffled his dark tufty hair. Vita allowed herself to be tucked up too, but she was clearly willing to stay awake, her forehead furrowed with the effort of keeping her eyes wide open. 
but eventually she gave a little sigh, clasped onto to her chest and fell asleep too. Dad wiggled his hand free of the glove pocket and patted Zita on her bony shoulder. She refused to put on her own Barbie truck pyjamas and was wearing one of Mum's black Nike tops. We'd argued a little over which one of us would wear it when Mum, one of Mum's straps broke and then she donated it to our dressing up box. I won, but when I tried it on, Zita laughed cruelly and said I looked like one of the hippos in her Disney video. I shoved her hard in the chest and said she was just jealous, but I felt that her common... I let her commandeer the little black nighty after that. Zita looked wonderful in it, like a little midnight fairy. My girly, Dad whispered, and he kissed her high forehead. The room seemed very quiet. Dad smiled at me, not quite meeting my eyes. Into bed, Princess Emerald, he said. Dad? Now come on, darling. It's way past your bedtime. Dad, promise you'll stay. Dad screwed up his face for a moment. Then he stood up, seizing my hand and kissed my ring. Your wish is my command, Princess Emerald, he said. Now stop looking so worried and hip-hop into bed. Dad started a hip-hop little song about Princess Emerald and her magic ring bling bling. I sang along too. I even danced around the bed, but when Dad tried to tuck me under the duvet, I slung my arms around his neck. Hey, hey, you're throttling me, Dad joked. Dad, you do promise, don't you? Play another tune, Princess Emerald, said Dad. I wish, I said that your wish is my command, didn't I? You didn't actually say you promised. Say it, Dad. Please say it. Okay, okay, I promise. You promise you'll stay forever? I promise I'll stay forever, he said. Now give me a kiss for night night. You never know, you might just transform me into a loathsome toad. From a loathsome toad into a handsome prince. You are a handsome prince already, silly, I said, kissing him. I was wrong. He was a total toad. I woke early, my heart beating fast. I slid out of bed and crept across the carpet, not wanting to wake Zeta or Maxie. I padded down the hall. I listened outside Mum and Dad's door. I heard muffled sobs. I ran into the bedroom. Mum was sitting on the edge of the bed, rocking backwards and forwards, her hands tugging her hair. Dad had broken his promise. He'd gone already.